In our next lesson on lipid metabolism from Chapter 17, our subject will be the activation and shuttle of fatty acids. We'll be considering fatty acid catabolism, which is the degradation or breakdown of fatty acids, and it's referred to as beta-oxidation. So it is a catabolic pathway. We'll see why it's referred to as beta-oxidation in the next lesson. Our primary source of fatty acids are triacylglycerols, and of course our first step is to disconnect those fatty acid chains from the glycerol backbone. We're going to use a lipoprotein lipase that will hydrolyze each one of those three fatty acid chains and now we can begin to oxidize it. Of course, if these fatty acids are released into the bloodstream, they are highly insoluble, very hydrophobic, and so they must be bound to some protein. Free fatty acid chains are bound to the protein albumin, and it is so abundant in the bloodstream that it represents about half of all of the protein. Once we've taken that fatty acid inside the cell, it must first be activated before we can carry out catabolism, and that process is illustrated here. Our goal is to take our fatty acid here, illustrated and highlighted in red, and we're going to attach that to coenzyme A to form acyl-CoA. Note that this is acyl-CoA, not acetyl-CoA. It's the entire fatty acid chain, and the enzyme that catalyzes this reaction is acyl-CoA synthetase. The process is illustrated here. Of course, we're eventually going to form a thioester bond in our product. As we know, if we break a thioester bond, it releases about 31 kilojoules of energy, and so if we want to form that bond, we have to input that much energy. In this case, that energy is going to come from breaking one of the phosphoanhydride bonds in ATP. So here's our fatty acid chain. The acyl-CoA synthetase is going to transfer AMP from ATP, and here's our acyl adenylate intermediate. And we're going to, along with that, release inorganic pyrophosphate. So the AMP group has been transferred to our fatty acid at the carboxy end. The next step is simply to exchange AMP for coenzyme A. So we're breaking the phosphoester bond in our acyl adenylate intermediate and we're forming a thioester link with acyl-CoA with release of AMP. So we've broken a phosphoanhydride bond in ATP to form a phosphoester bond in our intermediate and exchanged that for a thioester bond. So we essentially exchanged one type of phospho bond with, for another and it's a pretty even exchange so the delta G would be pretty close to zero. So the question is, what makes it irreversible? Well, remember, we released inorganic pyrophosphate, and so pyrophosphatase will clip that last phosphoanhydride bond, and that will give us enough energy to make this irreversible. The cost in terms of energy is two ATP equivalents. Although we only involved one molecule of ATP, we broke two phosphoanhydride bonds, and that qualifies as two ATP equivalents. Activation occurs in the cytosol, but as we'll see, beta-oxidation occurs within the mitochondrial matrix. So why would we activate it first? Well, as we receive the fatty acid inside the cell, of course it's initially received in the cytosol, and so it makes sense to go ahead and activate it there, keep it within the cell, it's charged and ready to go. So the question is, why would we want to oxidize it within the matrix? Well, for this you have to realize that our product is going to be acetyl-CoA. So if we produce acetyl-CoA within the matrix, how might we use that? Well, that's where all the enzymes are in the citric acid cycle. And so we can send our product, acetyl-CoA, right into the citric acid cycle and generate more energy in the process. So the question is, how do we get those acyl chains into the matrix? We need a shuttle system. They are transferred to and from the molecule carnitine, and that's our illustration here. So here we are in the cytosol. Here's our carnitine molecule. Here's our acyl-CoA. We've activated the molecule. We're simply going to transfer that acyl group, highlighted in red, to car carnitine with the release of coenzyme A. And now our acyl carnitine can be transported into the mitochondrial matrix by means of the carnitine transporter. 
and then we simply reverse the process within the matrix. Again, we're going to take that uh, acyl group and transfer it to CoA with the release of carnitine. Carnitine moves back into the cytosol so that it can pick up another fatty acid chain and carry that into the matrix. In our next lesson we'll look at the steps of beta oxidation and we'll see how we can generate some energy in these steps.